So I'm Jen, and today I'm back to spinning in my cowgirl boots, and I have the story for you of Ned Ludd and the Luddites. Now, Ned Ludd might have been a real person, and he might be completely fictional, but he was, believe it or not, the Robin Hood for knitters and spinners and weavers. And the stories go like this. Sometime in the late 1700s, around 1780, Ned Ludd was a young man who was either beaten for his laziness or uh, he was being, he was angry at his father or he was taunted by local youths and for whatever reason he lost his temper and smashed up two knitting frames and got away with it and ran away to live in Sherwood Forest just like Robin Hood and then he would come out in the middle of the night with his merry band and smash up frame machines like knitting frames and spinning jennies and powered looms. Where this comes from is there was an entire industry of cottage workers, people who worked in their homes, and sometimes with small frames or sometimes by hand, they would uh, knit stockings, they would knit socks, or they would spin on a spinning wheel or weave. These were the textile workers that made their living working in their home, and they were being threatened economically by industrialization. Ned Ludd, he became known some places as uh, Captain Ludd or General Ludd or even King Ludd would come out of the forest in the middle of the night and smash up the frames down the street in the factory. And it was kind of a joke whenever somebody found that their frame had been smashed or sabotaged. It was, aha, Captain Ludd did that. Well, in uh, about 30 years later, starting around 1810, 1811, smashing up frame machines in the textile industry became a serious thing. And it was done, I mean, hundreds, thousands of frames were smashed over a five-year period from 1811 to 1816. And the people who did this sabotage and smashing up called themselves Luddites after the old story of Ned Ludd. Luddites, when the term is used even today, were, uh, were, they were scorned and they were made fun of for being afraid of technology and advancement. And the truth is that the Luddite movement was a labor law movement. It was the laborers striking back at um, industry owners and fighting for their way of life and fighting for their income. The setting is, of course, between, uh, I think, 1802 and 1812 was the Napoleonic War, which the British government had fought. And then in 1812, we have what we in the United States call the War of 1812, where the British came back to America and tried to retake the colonies. What that meant, if you were a middle-class man uh, living in Britain, is that you had been at war pressed into service, um, the economy had been in shambles, and the working conditions were horrible for over 10 years. And on top of that comes along industrialization, where these powered machines were taking over your way of making a living. And to fight back, the Luddites started smashing up machines. And it was a very organized and very effective uh, knitting rebellion. Knitting and spinning and weaving rebellion and that's what it was. They had drills. There was hundreds of men and they would break into factories and burn them down or smash the machines or both. It became so effective that the British government flooded the areas where the Luddites were active with spies and troops and offered outrageous bribes for information. Still, they didn't get a lot of success with those measures because, and if you think about it, almost everyone was knitting and spinning and weaving on the side, if not full time, to supplement their income. This was part of them not starving to death. Prior to that, when everyone worked in their home, the prices were more or less the same for everyone. You bought your materials at about the same price 
and you made about the same number of stockings or the same yardage of yarn what have you as your neighbor did and you sold your product for about the same thing that your neighbor sold well if you take a job in a textile factory then you are paid based on how much you can produce and how much the materials cost the owner to buy and how much the finished products are sold by the owner and you have to share your profits with the owner and the machines can break or supplies can run out and all of a sudden you go from being able to make stuff yourself in your home on your own time on your own conditions to being completely dependent on all these other things you have no control over for your income plus as I'm sure we are all aware working in those early factories was absolutely horrific the conditions were so bad that most modern western people wouldn't go in those places to to use the bathroom much less work the 12 18 hour day and so came the Luddite rebellion and as I said it was very effective now it had been a crime for uh, I think almost a hundred years to smash up a frame machine but the British Parliament felt the need to get ahead of all of this destruction and keep the ta textile factories in business and so they passed a new they were passing a new law in I think it was 1812 or 1813 and under the new law it was a capital crime to smash up a machine they could and did literally put you to death for this crime now, I had known about the Luddites. In fact, I have been called a Luddite myself because I'm not real fond of technology and I spin by hand. Yeah, so I was aware of the Luddite movement, but what I had never been aware of was that Lord Byron took a very public, very controversial stand, Lord Byron the Poet. And I learned that because I just bought the latest uh, Piecework magazine and they have a nice little article about the Luddites and it includes a, a quote from Lord Byron. So once I knew that, of course, I had to go back to the internet and chase it all down and learn more for myself because that's just the way I am. And I found that on the eve of passing this bill, the one that gave the British government the right to put you to death for smashing up a machine, Lord Byron made a very famous speech against the law. And he was one of the few peers of the realm, one of the few wealthy people that took a stand in favor of the Luddites. He gave this speech and I read the, the speech and it was actually it was really well done. Uh, let's see, I wrote down a little bit of it. And he, in this speech, he says, are these the remedies for a starving and desperate populace? Will the famished wretch who has braved your baronets be appalled by your gibbets? Now a gibbet is a, like a gallow. It's a place that you string a man up and hang him from. Lord Byron also said, when death is a relief, and the only relief it appears you will afford him, will he be dragooned into, into tranquility? Well, that which has not been affected by your grenaders be accomplished by your executioners. So, I am not exaggerating when I say that these were knitters and weavers and spinners that literally braved death to hold on to their way of life. These were the true subversive <laughs> crafters. And uh, they kept on smashing machinery. And I think it was in 1813 that the British government captured and tried 60 men all at the same time in some sort of show trial. And of those men, I think 17 of them were hanged. And the rest were... Uh, were put in prison. Now the Luddite movement didn't last very long. The official Luddite movement, uh, I think their last action was 1813 or 1816, and it's generally considered a failure. However, in certain parts of England, the textile factories were kept small for over 50 years, and the frames that they used were kept small, and their output was kept small. And that, and the income for textile workers in those parts of England was uh, far more than what textile workers were suffering with and getting paid in other parts of England. So I wouldn't say it was a loss. I would say it was more like a draw. And it inspired other labor movements. I mean, there was a similar 
riot that happened, I believe, in the 1830s over advancements in farming machinery. And then even today, when people who are considered technophobic and not happy with advancements and um, complain about the internet and how much it takes to move their website over or complain endlessly about their phone, you know, people who, who are like Jen, like me, uh, we still get called Luddites. Because supposedly, we are dragging our feet against the inevitable technological advancements, and that might be true. I might actually be a Luddite at heart. I mean, look at me. I do hate my phone, and I'm not real happy with the internet these days and all the troubles that go with it, and here I am spinning my yarn by hand in a really old-fashioned way. But that's okay, because I have a feeling that if you're on this blog, you kind of have a little bit of Luddite inside you, too. So... I've included the link to Lord Byron's speech uh, in this post, so you can go and take a look at it if you like. And, and remember, next time someone gives you a little bit of hassle for being old-fashioned, then maybe you can um, you can say that you're following Captain Ludd, the, the Robin Hood of knitters and spinners and weavers. We're just all part of his merry band. Although we don't have to live in Sherwood Forest, and that's a good thing, because I never did like camping. Till the next time, enjoy.